All right, good evening, everybody. I'm KHOU 11 Chief Meteorologist David Paul. It is Tuesday, it is September the 14th. This is your Atlantic tropical weather update, including Tropical Storm Nicholas, who is still uh, interacting with uh, Texas and Louisiana, but spreading rain far down the Gulf Coast. And 95L and 96L out in the open Atlantic are a couple of spots we need to keep an eye on, both for the East Coast, uh, in particular for the East Coast over the next several days. We are at the statistical peak of hurricane season. Now, statistically, it's exactly September 10th or 11th, but we're right in here, and the Atlantic Basin is certainly very busy. We've got several spots that are going on out there. Where are we as far as storms? We've had a total of 14 named. We've had a total of six hurricanes, and we've had a total of three, three major hurricanes, Ida, Larry, and Grace. So where does that put us as far as a normal season goes? We'll focus right here. The 30-year average, when you look at a normal hurricane season, we normally see an average of 14 named storms. So we're right there, and we've got the second half of the season still to go, so we're gonna be way above average. Hurricanes, normally we have a total of seven hurricanes. We've had six so far. Normally we get a total of three major hurricanes. We've already had three major hurricanes. So if this pace continues, we're going to end up with a season that's well above normal. And the tropics remain busy. Nicholas inland now, but still impacting the Gulf Coast right now. We've got a spot sitting here just east of the Bahamas. That's got a 50 to 70% chance for development, 70% chance within the next five days. And then there are actually two spots out here coming off the west coast of Africa. In red is this spot, that's 95L. It is an invest right now, and it has a 90 percent chance of developing within five days. Then there's also this yellow area, which we think won't develop over the next couple of days, but given five days, it has a better chance, a 20 percent chance. And actually, models are picking up on both of these. So we'll take a look at that. First of all, uh, infrared enhanced satellite. And you can see 95L is beginning to tumble a little bit. It's getting a little counterclockwise rotation at the surface. It's, it's getting that look that it wants to begin to close off a low. It looks like there's a little bit of convection near a loose center of circulation. So this one does look likely to form, I think, over the next couple of days. That's why it's got a 90% chance for development. We look at the spaghetti plots on 95L and they consistently keep this heading to the west and maybe begin to curve it before it reaches uh, the uh, Antilles Islands. That being said, when we look at the GFS and the Euro models, they actually have a little bit of a lower trajectory on this one. Here, here are the European and the GFS, the Euro in red, the American model, the GFS in yellow. They both tend to pick up on some sort of development from 95L as we head into Friday. And then as we head further out into time, we go into Saturday, both the GFS and the Euro try to close off a low. So maybe we get a tropical depression, tropical storm out here. And then look what else is happening. That second spot with just a slight chance over the next five days, the Euro really picks up on that over the Cape Verde Islands as we head into Saturday and does close off a low. So it, it may end up that both of these become some sort of named systems, either tropical depressions or tropical storms. Uh, Odette is the next name on the list. And then a little bit closer to the continental U.S. Uh, east of the Bahamas, this is 96L, our other invest area. And it's, it's not quite as organized as the one off the west coast of Africa, but it's getting a little bit better organized. We've got some outflow up here at the upper levels. That's an indication that it's not being sheared, not being tipped over. So there's deep convection near a very loose center. It's not a center yet, but that's the center as it stands now. We've got deep convection there. So this one looks like it's getting itself a little better organized as well. Uh, 96L spaghetti plots do take this for the most part. The consensus is to keep it off the East Coast, but pay attention. The, uh, one or two of these runs are a little closer to the Outer Banks, and one run does take it right up into, uh, into Long Island. So, you know, it's not out of the question this could have a closer call with the East Coast of the U.S. going forward. Let's take a look at the American and European model. As we go into Thursday, both close off areas of low pressure. The GFS is a little more aggressive with a with a closed low on this one. Uh, scoots by the Outer Banks. And then both the American and the GFS create some sort of tropical depression or tropical storm off the East Coast. So both the big models that we lean on keep it off uh, the center off the coast of New York, Boston, Cape Cod. But that would give you a pretty good north wind on both these scenarios, and you would have some high swell surf and beach erosion there. That's going into this coming weekend, Saturday. 
and then Halifax, it misses, it misses Nova Scotia, but for Newfoundland, the American model does gray St. John's Newfoundland with uh, either a, a significant tropical system of some sort or a transitioning tropical system from a tropical storm or hurricane uh, into an extra tropical s system as it moves north into the cooler waters. But uh, in any case, the American model, Newfoundland, that really stacks up the, the isobars right next to each other. When you see them stacked up tightly like that, that indicates a very tight, very strong pressure gradient. And so you may get a very strong uh, wind up here across across uh, Nova Scotia as we head in Newfoundland. As we head up to the second half of the coming weekend, Sunday, 8 p.m., uh, the American model does give you guys impacts up across St. John's, Newfoundland. Okay, Tropical Depression Nicholas has had an interesting trick, uh, trip over the last uh, 48 hours. It made landfall on Monday night, just before midnight, as a Cat 1 hurricane. It was not forecast to become a hurricane, so it, it overachieved just a little bit. It made landfall right here. That is Matagorda County. Just, uh, just up the coast from Matagorda Bay, near a little town called Sargent, as a Cat 1 hurricane. Maximum sustained winds at 75. The peak gust on the coast that I saw was to 94 miles an hour. So we did have gusts up near, up and above 90 miles an hour as it made landfall. This has been an interesting system in, an, in as much as it has been in a textbook example of what the upper level winds can do to a, a tropical storm. The center, is completely exposed from all of the deep convection. That's all been blown off hundreds of miles to the east, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, all the way over into Florida. So what is going on with this? We'll take a look at the surface winds, and this is our uh, water vapor imagery, it helps us see the flow at the upper levels. So this is the upper level flow, but I've got the surface winds on here right now. And there they are, curly cueing around at the surface, around what's left of our tropical depression, winds at about 30, 35 miles an hour. But notice how all the clouds are ripping off in exactly the opposite direction that the surface winds are blowing. So you got surface winds feeding into that circulation. But up at 34,000 feet, here are the upper level winds, 250 millibars, and they are just roaring out of the west. And they have been since last night. And that is what eventually helped to weaken the system and help spare most of Inland parts of Southeast Texas, a heavy rain threat. The rain was all displaced off into the Gulf of Mexico and now into Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. Upper level winds racing across the top of the storm can rip them apart. As uh, we've mentioned before, a healthy hurricane needs a vertically stacked system right on top of each other, perfectly stacked up. When you get those upper level winds like that, it literally can tilt the storm over. And in some cases, like with Nicholas literally rip it apart and eventually you know you had a center here it ends up exposing the center the center gets completely uh, dislodged displaced from all of the thunderstorm activity and that will quickly weaken the system so we've now got a tropical depression winds of 35 these are tropical storm warnings for the Texas and Louisiana border forecast track is interesting so this is a weak surface system so as strong as those upper level winds are blowing out of the west, way up at 34,000 feet, they're way up there. And so the surface system, the cloud tops that go higher up are being blown off, but the system itself is not really feeling those strong winds way up at the top of the atmosphere. So it is only getting a nudge from those upper level winds. And so it's going to move into Louisiana and we think eventually stall out as we head into Thursday and Friday. So what does that mean for rainfall? As we know, these weak, slow-moving tropical systems are notorious heavy rainmakers. So here's the uh, future radar as we head into uh, tonight, Tuesday night. We go into Wednesday, 6 a.m. There's our remnant swirl, our depression of what's left of Nicholas. And all the rain is pushing down I-10 through New Orleans, up into Jackson, Mississippi, all the way into Pensacola and into the Florida Panhandle. We go into Wednesday afternoon and that continues. The center becomes completely exposed and all the rain dislodged by those upper winds pushing it off to the east. How much rain could we see? Well, over the next five days, you know, from Lake Charles all the way to Panama City has a threat for heavy rain and this is a flash flood threat. Of course, we don't need any more heavy rain around the New Orleans area, southeast uh, Louisiana, still recovering from Ida. 
but you're in that three to five, five to seven inch rain total possibility. Uh, New Orleans, so all the way to Mobile, Alabama, all the way into Panama City, Florida. Uh, Biloxi, Mississippi as well. So from New Orleans to Biloxi to Mobile to Panama City, you may end up having heavy rain off and on for the next five days. I could add up to three, five, five to seven from this dwindling uh, system. Nicholas says he winds down slowly over Louisiana. That's where we stand this evening in the tropical Atlantic. Questions, comments, hit me up on social. See you tomorrow with another update.